What's up guys, welcome to another one of my Star Wars lore episodes, and in this episode I'm going to talk about the snow speeder. Now, when the Rebels brought the T-47 air speeders, aka snow speeders, to the ice planet of Hoth, the amount of modifications they needed to be able to make the um, speeders work were actually quite extensive. The craft itself had already been equipped with twin laser cannons and a blade of armor along the hull, but sub-zero temperatures presented a very special challenge. Ice would quite often form on the air brake flaps, preventing stable flight conditions, and the repulsor coils to generate lift were prone to freezing solid. Now to remedy this, de-icer nozzles were plumbed into the air brake mechanisms and heaters were fitted to insulate the coils. At the same time, the T-47's overly efficient series of rearward radiator fins kept the main power generators too cool, so insulators were added to reduce the heat loss to the engines. Now, to make operational maintenance even easier, many of the snow speeders' components were either exposed or behind quick-release panels. Parts such as the power converters for the lasers or the cannon's collimating tips could be detached and replaced in the hangar within seconds. Now, in particular, the drive circuits were open for ready access. When the attack on Echo Base finally came, the defensive forces faced a squadron of AT-ATs and a battalion of General Veer's st Stormtroopers, um, Blizzard Force. Now, Rogue Squadron's pilots, led by Luke Skywalker, intercepted the AT-ATs with a series of harrying attacks designed to slow the enemy advance. Initial runs on the walkers, however, proved that the Imperial walkers were too well protected for blaster fire to penetrate them. So Luke ordered the use of the power harpoons and tow cables. Wedge Antilles and his gunner scored the first victory with this method, entangling and finally tri tripping the AT-AT. Although the majority of the snow speeders deployed on Hoth were destroyed during the retreat from Echo Base, the craft proved their worth by delaying the Imperial ground assault long enough to get the base crew to safety. Now, the tow cable attacks led the Empire to reconsider the deployment of their AT-AT walkers, and the Rebel Alliance continued to use modified T-47s in other environments. As well as the snow speeder variant, there were desert-specific sand speeders, which um, that equipped with anti-clogging dust filters, cooling systems, and precise weather radars, along with waterproof and flotation-capable swamp speeders and high-altitude air speeders with pressurized cockpit modules. These and other modified T-47s would remain a major part of the Alliance's air fleet throughout the Civil War. Now, the original T-47 air speeder was quite a popular craft, but it was also unarmed. It was often favoured by young pilots over the larger T-16 Skyhopper, the T-47 was typically used for personal transportation, light cargo haulage or courier duties within a planetary atmosphere. Now, this unremarkable craft would become the basis for a cold weather combat airspeeder that would play a major role in one of the Rebel Alliance's most, most hard fought battles. Now, as we all know, they were nicknamed the Snow Speeders by the Rebels. Uh, the aircraft combined engineering skill with tactical need. The vehicle was based on the standard Incom airframe, but it was bolstered, armed, and trans transformed into a battlecraft capable of matching the Empire's best assault forces. We were talking, we were talking about, it, about it earlier having, um, you know, engineering it for the, engineering for the cold and it had armor and we armor weapons. It didn't actually, originally didn't have any armor or weapons as its basic speeder. But one, so the, Re the Rebellion pretty much bought them in bulk and highly modified them with armor, weapons and specific needs depending on where they're deployed. Like for Hoth, they were engineered for the cold, now that and nicknamed Snow Speeders. Now, during the Empire's assault on Echo Base, a squadron of these of Snow Speeders um, were pressed into service to defend the escape effort of the Rebels, and the pilots and crews knew that their speeders were vastly overmatched and outgunned by the incoming Imperial Invasion Force. But the bravery of Rogue Squadron flyers during the Battle of Hoth helped not only to cement their reputation for heroism, but also to underline the dog toughness of this hardy little craft. Uh, in its civilian form, the T-47 could manage a top speed of around 650 kilometers per hour, but skilled rebel engineers were able to take the velocity up to 1,000 kilometers per hour for the snow speeder variant. Now, the craft's optimal combat speed was about 570, 
km an hour, making it slow enough for a pilot to fly it well, but fast enough for an enemy gunner to have difficulty tracking it. Uh, the craft performed best when flying at low altitudes, but could climb to a height of around about 250 meters if necessary. Above all, the snow speeders were swift and highly agile, with, with forward thrust provided by twin repulsive drives and high-powered afterburners. With only a layer of armor plating and no shield generators for protection, a snow speeder's crew would rely on speed and maneuverability to endure the battle. The addition of a gunner sitting back to back with a pilot meant that the snow speeder's cargo capacity was reduced to a mere 10 kilograms, barely enough for two um, emergency survival packs and a few detonator charges. But the trade off allowed the gunner to operate and target the rear firing power harpoon independently. And the second crewman could also fire the snow speeder's twin laser cannons using the computerized targeting system in his console. And the system tied into an array of sensors just in front of the pilot's viewport, and a pair of range-finding homing scanners on the blunt prow of the craft. Now, with the power harpoon on the back of the snow speeder itself, on the civilian models, the power harpoon was used to tow cargo modules and was often deployed by rebel pilots against Imperial ground troops. However, fearing that the Empire would, would actually send AT-ATs to attack Hoth's Echo Base, which they inevitably did, Luke Skywalker and tactician Beryl Chiffonich devised the tow cable concept, which was used against the Imperial Walkers with devastating effect. And that is some of the history and specifications of the T-47 airspeeder, known to most of us Star Wars fans as the Snow Speeder. Um, if you like the video, be sure to drop a like, uh, leave a comment or two, let me know what you thought of the video. And um, I'll talk to you all in the next one. I'll catch you later, guys.